Six lessons are usually a great start to learning a new skill set, be it dancing, Zumba, hang gliding. That same six lesson approach can be easily applied to the creative skill that my guest has mastered. Welcome back Eileen Roche, editor of Designs and Machine Embroidery Magazine. She's here to present the remaining three lessons on the basics of machine embroidery. Nancy, a lot has changed since I was here mm -hmm. 11 years ago teaching machine embroidery. Yet, the foundation remains the same in embroidery. The fourth lesson showcases hooping. Hooping the fabric and stabilizer is like buckling up for a car trip. It's got to be done, and it's got to be done right. Machine embroidery in six easy lessons. That's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy. Celebrating 30 years of sewing and quilting with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock. A complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effects threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover. Makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years experience the clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. Being the second program of a two-part series on six lessons for machine embroidery, Lessons one, two, and three were in the first program. You can watch them on DVD or all the last 52 shows of Sewing with Nancy are online at nancyzeman.com. So you might want to check out those lessons one, two, and three. And we ended by placement, Eileen. Mm -hmm. And now it's time to get it in the hoop, which is one of the biggest challenges many embroiderers face. So here we had our first template where we stitched out a sample template on a stabilizer, cut it the size of the hoop opening. And before I put it in the hoop, just like that, I want to show my favorite technique, the, the tip that you gave me. This is just a rubberized mat that I've cut a window in. And I like this rubberized mat because it creates friction between my outer ring and mm -hmm. the, the hooping surface. And it's shelf liner. Right. Readily available yeah. everywhere. And you cut a window about the size of the hoop and I'm going to place this on here and then it doesn't shift or scoot around your table. And the window allows you to view the grid beneath so that it, it's very helpful to have those lines for it's alignment. And when you get to sheer fabrics, yes. this is perfect. Mm -hmm. Stabilizer goes next. In lesson one, we gave you a review of the stabilizer. Obviously, this is the sample I use for the tearaway. And then the fabric goes on top. And this, takes a, this is a small hoop, so mm -hmm. there's not a lot of latitude here. Mm -hmm. And that template is the exact same size as the hoop, so it's only going to fit in there one way. This is a great technique when you're using a design that's almost as large as the sewing field, where mm -hmm. you won't have the ability to rotate or move within the hoop. I yep. notice you're just using the palms of your hand. Sure. That's great. It's the strongest part of your hand. And I tighten this up. Mm -hmm. And this would be ready for the next step, which is embroidery. But we have many more hooping options to share. Right. So I have uh, our printed template that we did in embroidery software. And on my apron, I'm choosing a tearaway stabilizer. I have a larger five by seven hoop selected. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna center that apron front over the outer ring. And I don't really have to be concerned about being square because on my machine, I have the ability to rotate in one degree increments. I just wanna make sure that my fabric is uh, wrinkle free, no puckers. And I'll push that inner ring. Before I tighten the screw, I'll just smooth the fabric one last time. And then once that screw is tightened, no more tugging on the fabric because mm -hmm. that can distort the fibers. Now we want to show a really fun technique <laughs> yes. for hooping a t-shirt. So, or this is a polo shirt, same thing. I'm using the end of an ironing board and I have positioned my hoop at the end of the ironing board. And then Nancy, I am basically going to dress the ironing board. Now you might want to add, while well, Eileen is dressing her ironing board, mm -hmm. that she has her stabilizer. It's a cutaway stabilizer and it's a fusible one. So she fused it to the back of the shirt. Which so. is important because it's going to stabilize mm -hmm. that knit and frankly it's going to remove um, all the stretch in the knit for the embroidery process. And so once I have my outer ring in place, and I'm just using those two target stickers as placement guides for the embroidery design. And I'll use that later on to uh, rotate the design at the machine. And this is just, I have this the placket over here, so it's kind of giving me a little bit of trouble. 
And you, you know, when you're doing this at home, you'll be right in front of that ironing board. Yes, and Lee you know. is reaching to the side. And once you get it secure in the hoop, you're then going to pull the whole T-shirt up mm -hmm. around and nest the it. ironing board, and you're going to nest it. Now, mm -hmm. we've selected a small polo shirt, and which could be a little tricky on a really wide ironing board. But once we get that in place, then we go to the machine and open the design area so that you can access it. We'll show you on the machine how that looks, but otherwise it's really tricky to get that hooped without the end mm -hmm. of the ironing board. So now you've seen three ways of hooping fabric, and now the third stabilizer that we talked about, or one of the th four stabilizers, three of the four, is a sticky back stabilizer where we have placed the stabilizer in the hoop. Earlier I used a pin to score around the edges and then I removed the paper backing. This is one of my favorite stabilizers to use because then you don't have to put the fabric in the hoop. Right. It's and self. Many people prefer it, uh, you know, but it's a matter of choice because, mm -hmm. you know, then it is in your garment or sure. your accessory or home decor item. So here mm -hmm. we have the sticky part, and we had the placement target sticker from our lesson three mm -hmm. positioning where we're going to place the embroidery. And you can get it pretty much online, you know, you can get the target sticker aligned with the grids or the little nod knobs on the front or the sides, and then there are also. There's a little knob at each north, south, east, west. Right. And put and it now down. you're set. So I I'm, I'm going to show how to do a towel. The problem right. with towels are they're bulky and they have loops which like to be caught right mm -hmm. in the stabilizer. Sticky stabilizer is great to use, but you have to protect the towel from the sticky. So I do have a sticky stabilizer <laughs> here, but I have ironed on the back a low-tack iron-on tearaway that after the embroidery I'll be able to easily remove. So I have my target sticker in place, and I'm just going to fold up the towel at the border, and you would make sure that that's a perfectly you know, straight line. And then I'll position that straight line on the inside of the hoop. So we have straight fold to straight inside edge of the hoop, finger press it to the sticky. When I open it up, I am dead center in the hoop and my needle can go right there and stitch. How about that? So now you've seen numerous ways of getting the fabric, whether it's ready-made and in a tube like the polo shirt or a t-shirt or it's flat or you have used printed or stitch stable or templates. These are all ways to get the fabric in the hoop. Now we're ready for lesson number five. It's the fifth of six lessons and it's finally time to sit at the machine and sew. Embroidering is the fifth lesson. It can also be as simple as pushing a button, but before giving that button a tap, there are a few more checks and balances to review. Machine embroidery is all about preparation and now the fun starts and the first hooping and also placement design that we had was working with a stock design, one that came with the machine. We have the fabric hooped, we have the template in place, and as I place this hooped temp template next to the LCD screen, you can see that the design is in the same sequence, same position as it is in the hoop. So all I have to do now is remove the template, save that for another project, then, this is an apron, pre-made apron, or as we call them, blanks. Just put the fabric underneath the presser foot, and then slide the mechanism of the hoop into the machine. I have the thread color. The first thread color is green. It's going to stitch the, the leaves, and I just, all I have to do is push start, and it will stitch. And it's a no hands type of sewing as we watch this sew. And let me just show you what it is stitching. This is a review from our first lesson. This shows the first stitch will be in green. The second will be the fill stitches. Then we'll have some nice accents on the top. And the final orange will pop that daffodil. Changes threads three or four times, four times to be exact. And we'll have an embroidery, Eileen. I'm just gonna stop this right now so that you can tell about the next option. Nancy, it's so easy to do when you hoop perfectly square and in the center like you did. Sure. But 
and I didn't hoop so square. So I have to figure out how many degrees to rotate my design. I'll use this tool that comes with the accompanying book to the program, and I'm going to run the edge of the tool parallel with the edge of the hoop. I've centered the grommet over the template that's on my fabric. And the zero on the tool is at the top of the hoop because that's indicating the top of the hoop, which will eventually be the top of the design. And I swing the dial so that the red arrow sits directly on top of the arrowhead on the template below it. So that tells me to rotate my design 204 degrees. Before I rotate, I'm going to add a basting file to mm -hmm. this design, and that's my insurance that will enable me, just in case something happens, to get back square in the hoop. And now I'll touch rotate and rotate that 204 degrees. So I can go 90 and then 90 again, and then I'll go by 10 and 204. Now my design is rotated exactly as planned. And Nancy, you have a stitch out of this, so I'm going to go ahead and start the machine, sure. the first color. And as it stitches, but oh. it, embroidery is, the, the, the stitching is simple. It just maybe takes, oh, 45 minutes sometimes or 20 mm -hmm. minutes to stitch a design. This is about 12 minutes. But the first stitch that Eileen is stitching on her design is an outline stitch. This is an applique. It's a little hard to see. There we go. There's the outline stitch. Then the second stitch, you place fabric on top. And then after the stitches, then you trim it away with your scissors. And the third stitch is a statin stitch that goes over the applique. So those are the sequencing of the stitches as it goes around. So you'll be changing threads if you want to, thread colors if you'd like after each of the color changes, or you can do it all in one thread color. It really doesn't matter. The embroidery takes a few minutes, but you can, it's a no hand sewing type of, uh, type of thing. So you've done the basting stitch. Yes, and now it'll just do that placement guide for my mm -hmm. applique fabric. And once that's complete, I think I'll move on and yes. show how to put the polo shirt onto sure. the machine. Now the basting stitch, you know, it's, that's not going to stay there. Right. Eventually, it's a long stitch, obviously, basting stitch, so we'll remove it after the mm -hmm. embroidery process. Sure. But if this were to pop out of the hoop, that's the alignment mark that I would use to get square again in the yep. hoop. As we mentioned many times, it's the insurance policy. This design that I showed you was enlarged on the hoop that I have. It comes in many sizes, and mm -hmm. we have the small hoop, right. small size right there. But now, the next is the hooping of the very large polo shirt, golf shirt, right. and this takes a little time. Yeah, it can be cumbersome at the hoop, I mean at the machine, but first we want to make sure that we have stabilizer behind the design area, and we want to also make sure that we don't have a portion of the shirt caught in the hoop on the wrong side, which can happen very easily. I have turned the shirt completely inside out, even the sleeves, because that allows me to keep an eye on uh, those parts of the garment that I don't want to get stitched into the hoop. Mm -hmm. So once I have it on the, on the machine, I then open up the design area, open up that fabric to, dis to expose the design area. And now I want to retrieve my polo shirt design, which is a little um, golf emblem. And it's stored in my memory, so here we have it. And I'll touch sewing. Now I have to move that design all the way up to that white target sticker. And once I do that, using the jog keys, again, I can make sure that I'm square. And this looks like this would benefit from um, checking the rotation of the design. So I'll just see how many degrees that should rotate. And I think it's just going to be maybe two degrees. And once I get that, swing that dial on top, it does tell me to rotate just two degrees. So we'll go into rotate, go to two degrees. Now, because this is a polo shirt with kind of a nubby texture, I'm going to drop just a small piece of the water-soluble stabilizer mm -hmm. on that knit. And then we'll press go, and off we go. Great, and we'll, we'll let that stitch away. Okay. That water-soluble stabilizer, that top stabilizer, is used in many, many applications. 
what we used in uh, a towel. Mm -hmm. We're, we also hooped a towel earlier, and I, I did, as Eileen is stitching, uh, stitching that, I did put the towel in my embroidery machine. And then I would do the same because I would need to just have that nap, have a flat surface for the stitches to come. And I would position where that target sticker was. So we're going to, that, that stitch is quick. It does, it's just, you know, one minute. <laughs> one minute. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. This was stitched in the same manner here, just two golf clubs and a, and a golf ball. And we removed the water soluble stabilizer from the top. And, classy, but a nice, fast embroidery to work with. We'll be showing you this in our sixth lesson, but after you hoop a towel and you have a stabilizer on it, this is what the towel that we hooped, this is an example of what it would look like. You can see the basting stitches, and it does take some time to stitch around all the embroidery, but it's just by pushing the button, letting it stitch, and changing threads when the time comes. The embroidery step, it's the most fun, and it is very rewarding. All of your planning and preparation in the first five lessons have brought you to this point, lesson number six, the finishing tips. The steps are simple but important, and then you can enjoy your accomplishment. Eileen finished embroidering the polo shirt, the golf shirt, and now to finish it up. Which is tear away that film type water soluble. Of course you could use water, but it just as easily tears away. Mm -hmm. And then we'll pop this out of the hoop and turn it over because we have a, a very large expanse of stabilizer that cut away that was fusible. And you'll notice that even though it was fusible, you can separate it from the base fabric. And then I'm gonna trim it away. I don't need that great big patch of the stabilizer. <laughs> so Best to do this by pulling the stabilizer away from the garment and then lifting it up so that when you trim, you don't you know, nip into the fabric itself. Sure. And once we have that finished, it's time to press. And Nancy, I have a napkin over here that I'll show the pressing technique. Mm -hmm. You wanna place it on a flat but napped surface like a terry cloth towel or this um, fluffy fabric and then we just press right from the back. And what that does is it lets those stitches on the front side stand up and not get flattened out, basically. It, it's just a great way of making sure you put a nap with a nap, put that design down. Mm -hmm. Now, we had a cutaway stabilizer, the water-soluble stabilizer, you saw Eileen remove that, but if you had, you had the basting stitches, mm -hmm. make sure that you re remove those basting stitches from the wrong side. Right, and I often use a seam ripper and just, just lay it on clip. top of the tearaway because sure. the tearaway is still protecting the towel. And once you have it done, you know, just separate it, holding on to the embroidery and mm -hmm. gently pulling away. You know, it can be a violent act and you don't want to harm the embroidery, <laughs> so just gently tear it off. So we'll just finish the top. Mm -hmm. and now some of those tiny bits of water soluble stabilizer you can remove with a wet a cotton uh, mm -hmm. swab or you know a wet toothbrush, something like that, sure. and it'll just disappear. As you can see, there's a lot of preparation for embroidery, but the results are beautiful and the stitching is a lot of fun. There's a lot to learn mm -hmm. and you have to get to know your machine. You have to get to know the different types of embroidery designs and the tools, stabilizers, measuring tools and then placement. Testing is so important. Make certain that you test your, your embroidery designs on some fabric, have a towel that you're embroidering right. over and over again just mm -hmm. to make sure you like what you see, and then you have great projects, gifts. Really wonderful gifts for baby, mm -hmm. for bride, for friends, you know, for the holiday. It's a great resource for you. So if you're a wannabe or a newbie embroiderer, we hope you've learned, enjoyed and learned the six steps of machine embroidery. Today's Nancy's Corner guest, a physician, prescribed quilting as part of the healing process. The order wasn't written for a patient, but for herself. Please welcome Michelle David, who joins us via Skype from Boston. She's overcome a debilitating illness with the help of the therapeutic process of working with color, fabric, and thread. So great to see you, Michelle. Welcome to Sewing with Nancy. 
Thank you so much for inviting me, Nancy. I really um, I'm looking forward to this interview. And I want to say hello to your viewers also. Well, they'll, they'll be glad to meet you too, Michelle. And the interesting thing is that as a physician, you prescribe things, medicines, but your medicine to overcome an illness was quilting. Exactly. Um, it, I uh, was very ill uh, around the end of 1999. Uh, and uh, I actually, one of the reasons I was very scared was that I couldn't read, and reading was my passion at the time, because I couldn't concentrate on word. Um, so I was reading about a quilting class uh, in our town, and I took a class with a very good teacher called Mirya Sokolov, and she taught me how to quilt. And at the time, uh, she taught me traditional quilting with mm -hmm. uh, cutting templates. Um, doing an uh, exact quarter scene. So I created then my uh, first quilt. It, it's traditional American patchwork, but the color combinations are certainly your unique choices. Yes, exactly. I grew up in Haiti, and in Haiti, we love color. The, the Caribbean sun makes everything so bright. Mm -hmm. uh, you walk down the street, and there's uh, painters in the, on the street. The street is essentially a large, huge art gallery. So I grew up with color, so I love color. And the rest of your artwork, your quilting artwork, certainly has great color in it. And you then kind of pass by the traditional quarter-inch seam allowances after this first, uh, first attempt, didn't you, your first project? <laughs> Right, exactly. I completed the project, uh, and and it was my first quilt was sort of a large quilt, very traditional. Uh, and my teacher actually didn't think I could finish it, being my first class, but being <laughs> competitive, I actually completed it. It's end quilted and it's done. But I just realized I really did not uh, enjoy making traditional quilting. I love seeing them, but I didn't I enjoy sure. making them. I happened to go to the New England Quilt Museum, and they had an exhibit at the time called Oxymoron. And it was fabulous. It just opened my eye. That was my first exposure to art quilting. Uh -huh. And I just essentially ran home and started quilting again. And I've been quilting ever since. I would like to show our viewers some of your other quilts. The, uh, the Tears of Blood, the Haiti quilt that you created. Tell us about that quilt. The, that quilt came about because uh, right after the earthquake, which was a very terrifying moment, sure. um, I mean, immediately after her, the earthquake, like every other Haitian, we, we couldn't find family member. And mm -hmm. then I started calling all the international organization to, to go on medical mission. So about four weeks later, um, I went to Haiti on a medical mission, uh, practicing in the Ted Hospital in Port-au-Prince. And my brother took me... Uh, on a tour of the um, Port-au-Prince, he, he lives, still lives in Port-au-Prince, and I saw the devastation. Oh. And I just felt I had to create a, um, sure. a quilt to witness what I was seeing. Uh, so that's why the quilt is in the shape of the um, Haitian yes. um, um, country. Mm -hmm. And the, the sea, you can see, is uh, red to to say we really were crying tears of blood and yes. all the blood we were seeing in the hospital. Wow. And also witnessing um, the stories of the patient themselves. A lot of time there were many, many wonderful volunteers that didn't speak the language. So when I was treating them, they were, they, I just had to listen to their story. They needed to tell somebody sure. their story. So I heard and heard many stories. So I, I felt this, this quilt is a witness to those stories. Beautiful. And then you've done some portraits, uh, quickly. The, the Haitian goddess, we're going to talk about that one briefly, and the lioness. Those, those are bright, and I, lo I love the characterization of them. The, the, the Haitian goddess is called Urzuli Dantor, and it's a quilt that actually was made... Um, it's the second in a series. The first in a series uh, was about my mother. Mm -hmm. And um, Carrie, Karen, uh, Carrie Brezhnehan had uh, invited people to submit quilt to an exhibit called I Remember Mama. And uh. I created that quilt uh, as part of that series. And Ursula Dentor is a Haitian goddess who represents women and love. Um, and so, and it's also a very strong uh, sure. goddess, um, very feminist 
kind of goddess. And my mother was a feminist. She grew up in a patriarchal country. She raised three daughters to be feminists, to take care of themselves. So uh, <laughs> this is really to, to, so that's why I created oh. that quilt about my mother. Well, Michelle, I want to thank you for being our guest on Sewing with Nancy. It's an inspiring story, beautiful quilts. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for inviting me. You're welcome. And for those of you who are joining us, you can also find out more on nancyzeman.com about Michelle's story, watch our program again, find out social media. And special thanks to Eileen Roche for being with us during this two-part series of machine embroidery and six easy steps. Bye for now. Eileen Roche's book, Machine Embroidery and Six Easy Lessons, includes all the information from this two-part series and four essential embroidery tools. The full-colored book with tools is $29.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2620. Order item number MEB0010, Machine Embroidery and Six Easy Lessons, credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, celebrating 30 years of sewing and quilting with Nancy Zeman, has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles, Closed Captioning Funding, provided by Olissa. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.